And Adam Frazier for the past couple of years signs with a new team and is a part of engineering a major turnaround. Adam has signed with the Kansas City Royals and joins us on Hot Stove on this Wednesday. And it, it feels like it was like a year ago to the day, Adam, that we had you on the program or program, as you guys say down there. Uh, and you were speaking to us in the same spot at Vanderbilt mid-workout about your deal to go to the Orioles. Here you are signing with Kansas City. Thanks for the time, and uh, tell us how you're feeling about joining the Royals. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, I think we got a good chance with these uh, other additions that have been made this offseason. Uh, a lot of leadership coming in, a lot of experience, and uh, a lot of good players. So um, join up with some, some uh, young talent, and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, talk, talk to us a little bit about the, the fact that you're going to be rejoining uh, some of your former college teammates, right? Renfro, Stratton as well. Um, what, what does that mean to you? Uh, we're very excited about it. Um, you know, it's kind of wild to be 10 years later and we're all going to play again, play together again. So uh, we're very excited. Um, looking forward to getting after it with them again. And, um, you know, it's going to be fun. We always talk about, uh, when we visit with you, about your collegiate days at Mississippi State, and it seems like uh, that program, or once again, program, puts out, like, great players into the big leagues in waves. In the 70s, Buck Showalter and Jack Lazorko. I see you, Jack. You're probably watching. Hopefully you're watching down there in Dallas. Uh, and, and then there's that great class of, um, of uh, Will Clark and Brantley and uh, Palmero and Thigpen, Oof, and then you come along – with uh, with Brandon Woodruff and with your your Royals teammate now you and uh, and Renfro back together you got to be pretty proud of what you guys did in college that's a tight alumni group yeah very proud it's uh, it's crazy to think I think we have five or six guys off the same team still playing I think ten guys off that team made it to the big league so um, we didn't know why we were so good then but now it all makes sense um, so it's it's been a lot of fun to be able to continue the journey with everyone and, uh, you know, just continue to, you know, everybody's striving for the same goal. And, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible what's been going on for, I guess, 10 years now. What is it about that program that just keeps, keeps on dishing out big leaguers? What, what do they do different there? Uh, I guess it's the culture. Um, you know, the tradition Mississippi state is, is, is very thick. Um, you know, the fans, the culture, the, the toughness of the, the program, uh, the program, sorry, in, installs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of installs in you. The, it's the hard work. It's the blue collar. It's um, it's a little bit of everything that that kind of comes with Mississippi State baseball. And you know, it started way before us. So it's, it, you know, to be able to continue that tradition is is pretty special. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, talking about hard work and toughness, right? What about your workout? Because you say after this interview, you're going to get in there and get after it. I want you to tell me what the routine is like, and maybe I can learn something here. Uh, I'll do the same. Man, the, <laughs> the routines kind of change throughout the years. You know, it used to be squat as much as we can and lift as much as we can. And then, you know, as we've gotten older, it's kind of turned into about 30, 45 minutes of stretching to start the day. And mm -hmm. then uh, and then you kind of get, get the weights going and then, uh, you know, hit and all that hit throw, everything else. So... Um, we got a bunch of guys here to you know keep each other on their on their toes, so it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, just wait till you get into your mid fifties, there, bro. That'll <laughs> that will deteriorate. He doesn't rapidly. stretch, Adam. He doesn't stretch. Don't do anything anymore. You said you said <laughs> flexibility number one. He never stretches. Goes out there in the tennis courts, and of course it's gonna hurt and blow it out. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're deteriorating. Yeah. Hey, let, let's talk a little bit more about the Royals, Adam, because uh, Carlos and I were spitballing about this. We've been talking about them for the past few weeks now how it, it feels like they're building something that can really compete. This isn't like, let's, uh, let's just get some kids some experience and maybe finish 500. I think the goal is a little bigger in Kansas City. Who on that roster has reached out to you? Who did you know previously? And give us a sense for, for where they are. Uh, yeah, I think you're exactly right. We, um, we got a chance to, to go after that division this year, and we're all excited about that. Uh, you know, Bobby Witt. Uh, he reached out pretty quickly, Michael Massey and Waka, along with the guys that I already knew, um, you know, as, as y'all mentioned. So um, guys are excited. I'm um, looking forward to, to getting after it with those guys. Some really special talents over there already. Um, so I think we, we can bring in the mix of the experience and leadership and, uh, you know, kind of 
take that next step and, and the division's wide open. So, you know, that's our goal right away. And, you know, once you get in, anything can happen. Hey, speaking of Bobby Witt, as we take a look at the uh, the offseason additions board in Kansas City, did you did you learn anything about playing with, you know, young super duper stars from your year in Baltimore? Because, man, is that is that talent cupboard loaded? Um, I, I don't know what you could learn, quote unquote, but but um, how would you apply that year to maybe your year that you'll be spending now with Bobby Witt Jr. and these young Royals? I learned those guys are really good at baseball. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's about it. But uh, no, it's you keep those guys in, in a good headspace. You know, they're they're all still young, so you know they they have some experience. But keep them in a good headspace. Um, you know, give them the the love and the and the leadership, the guidance, I guess I should say. And uh, you know, it's to teach them the little things, the ins and outs on the field, the ins and outs off the field, how to, how to uh, you know separate good games from bad games and, and just stay stay level so um you know i'm looking forward to playing with bobby um, along with all the other young guys over there um and and just continue their growth so you know as, as long as we keep them in a good spot they're going to contribute to wins and it's going to lead to more wins for the kansas city royals adam your, your versatility defensively it's uh, really um uh, something that's very powerful for Kansas City and they'll be acquiring. Is there a favorite position that you play? Or are you one of those guys that's like, look, just put me in the lineup. I'll play wherever. I just want to hit. Yeah, favorite, I guess, would be second just because I'm most comfortable. But I really don't mind either corner outfield. And uh, But, I, yeah, it's more of what you just said is, you know, put me in the lineup and let's win the game. Um, you know, that's that's the goal. It doesn't really matter where I'm at. And, um, just help the team win and, and contribute in a positive way every night because um, the ultimate goal is to win. So um, it doesn't matter. Adam, uh, intrepid reporter J.P. Morosi, who's with us today, has a question for you as well. Thanks, Maddie. Adam, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, for, for our viewers who don't know, uh, the WBSC Premier 12 is probably the second biggest international tournament after the WBC, and you played for Team USA back in 2015. I was reminded today the all-tournament team featured you as the best second baseman of any country in the tournament and Shohei Otani as the most outstanding pitcher. What stands out to you about that experience and playing in it and also experiencing Shohei in his home country? Yeah, good morning, JP. Um, that was an incredible experience. Um, we had to spend some time in Taiwan and then watch uh, Shohei pitch in, in the uh, Tokyo Dome. So uh, we were all expecting to face a Shohei in the in the championship game of that that tournament um, because we, we got to watch him pitch and they pulled him early to save him for the USA team in the championship. Well, Korea came back and beat him, so we didn't have to do that. But um, that was pretty special at the time. That was that was kind of when uh, I guess we got a preview of what was to come for Shohei Otani. Um, so that was a pretty special experience for us. But uh, you know, anytime you get to put the USA jersey on, is, is very special. And um, that was that was a fun experience for myself and and the guys we got to play with. So uh, yeah, it was cool. Hey Adam, before we let you go, uh, quick story, and you can confirm or deny that this applied to you as well. When John Smoltz was a free agent and being courted heavily by the New York Yankees. A big part of his decision not to sign there was a longstanding policy that players could not bring golf clubs on the road. Uh, it, you, you've got more access to golf in Kansas City than you would have in, say, Baltimore had you gone back. Is that a part of the decision? Oh, um, yeah, that's a tough rule right there. Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you got to be able to golf and get away. It's uh, – I, I, I really strongly believe in that. My golf swing is not great, as you can see right there. Um, but yeah, the, the, the off days are special to get away, experience some fun with your teammates, some bonding, and it's just a mental refresh. So it's a long season and, and you gotta have it. Yeah, and you do it righty. So, you know, anyway, some people say that it's gonna mess up your baseball swing. It doesn't apply to you. But actually, Joe Maurer, Hall of Famer, he used to play golf before games and actually worked out very nicely for him. It didn't affect wow, his, that's yeah, his golf. Hey, you know what? Speaking of golf, I can ask you this. Did you ever play with Hicks, who golfs right Oof. and left-handed? That's insane. Hits oh, yeah. it a ton, no, too. Uh, yeah, you know, Hicks is incredible. It's, it's, it's special watching that guy play golf. So, yeah, I'm uh, trying to get a couple more rounds together in, in Arizona in a couple of weeks. So, uh, 
yeah, you want to put up his swing and, and take mine down, please. I mean, <laughs> he, you know, I think Hicks signed with the Angels so he could play in Orange County. Yeah, more more golf, more golf. Yeah. yeah, hey, Adam, we appreciate the visit, man. Congrats on your deal in Kansas City. I think that's, again, we said it when you went to Baltimore. A uh, great fit for you and for the club, and we'll uh, visit with you during the season. Way to go.